system. Yeah? All right. Now, who doesn't have time to get sick this year? Raise your hand. Yeah, me either. Who likes getting sick? It's not me, right? Okay. Show of hands, where are the guests tonight? I'm going to pick them. You're not a patient in the clinic. All right. Now, out of you guests, how many of you are here because you had a friend, co-worker, a spouse that actually drug you here tonight? <laughs> Is there just one? Well, here's the thing. It tells me something about you, Lonnie. It tells me that you have somebody that loves you and cares about your health, right? right? Or it tells me that you have somebody in your life that is sick and tired of hearing you whine and moan and complain. So they made you come to this workshop, right? I'm just, just kidding. I'm just kidding. For, for those of you that are guests, I want to introduce myself. My name is Dr. Marley Smith. That is my beautiful wife, Dr. Heather Smith. We're both health and wellness experts that specialize in the spine and the nervous system. And the girls that you see floating around in back are our dream team. We literally couldn't do any of these workshops without them. So anywhere from reserving this room to ordering the food to prettying up a lot of the documents that you're going to get after this workshop to finding a sponsor, making sure that we actually have something to raffle off. That is all of my team, okay? So can we give them a round of applause? Yeah. They're awesome, right? They're excited because you know how, how awesome they are. And I want to recognize everybody in this room. This is an awesome group of people. You guys are awesome, okay? It is a weekday at 6 o'clock. We finally had a nice day, and you're here to learn, right, and to learn about health, to learn about your body, so that you can get better health outcomes. Now that is just awesome, and that warms my heart. So you guys are a very, very special crowd, and I want to recognize you for that. And I want to promise you something, okay? Me and Dr. Allen and our team, we have a commitment to you guys, a commitment to this community to educate, empower, and adjust as many families as possible on your guys' journeys towards health and true wellness, okay? And I promise we will never waver away from that mission. Okay, so that's why we're here tonight. That's why we focus so heavily on education. It is truly part of our mission. All right? But I'm going to ask you guys to commit something to me. Can you do that? Yeah. First of all, just listen. Okay? Listen. All right? Truly absorb this information. And not only that, what I want you to do is I want you to think. Can we all do that? I don't want you to think like me, but I am going to ask you to think. Fair enough. And then at the end of this, I want to make sure that you guys take action. Okay, I want you to commit to me that you're going to implement at least one, if not two of the things that I share with you tonight to make sure that we can snot get sick this year. Right? What's that? Enough of the snots. Your jokes, Dr. Okay. <laughs> I'm going to bring them all up. In all reality, why are we here though? What do, you, what do you guys think? Do we live in a sick country or a healthy country? Do we live in a sick community or a healthy community? Unfortunately, yeah, it's, it's sick. The new norm, we know that one in eight couples are going to struggle to conceive. Right? If they actually conceive, their kid has a one in five chance of developing a learning disorder. Right? We know the autism rate is now one in 68. We know that 70% of our population is either overweight or clinically obese. We know that a quarter of our adult population is going to struggle with a mental illness over the course of their lifetime. Cancer is going up. Heart disease is going up. Right? Obesity, diabetes, all of those are on the rise. And at the same time, life expectancy and quality of life expectancy are going down. Okay? So that is why we're here tonight. And we, when we talk about chronic illness like that, we know that we don't get sick, we do sick, right? Meaning it is not bad luck or bad genes. The research tells us that it's our bad behavior that's getting us the outcomes that we've been getting. Say yes if you understand that. Yes. Make sense? So when we look at acute illness, like colds, flus, stomach viruses, we adopt the same philosophy. We don't get sick, we do sick, okay? 
And we are here tonight because you guys are dropping like flies. <laughs> Literally, a third of our patient base is got like the sniffles, or they got a cold, or they got a flu, or a stomach bug, and we see it in the community, right? There's people I've heard that's taking like a month and a half for them to recover from a flu, right? Or a cold. We want you guys to not get sick, and if you do get sick, recover as soon as possible, okay? They have literally closed down schools. There's schools this year that have had to close down because their staff is so sick. So we're going to troubleshoot that. All right, and we're going to talk about my favorite topic, health. Now, when it comes to health, we have to realize that we are on this health continuum somewhere. Each and every single one of us is on this health continuum. When we are over here, this is negative 10, right? This is positive 10. Now, positive 10 is like optimal health, right? 100% health. When we look at that negative 10, well, that's death. Okay, so all of us are on this continuum somewhere. And no matter where you are, you're moving in one direction or the other. Does that make sense? And you're moving in one direction or the other at a certain velocity, a certain speed. Okay? And tonight, what I'm going to do is I'm going to challenge you. I am going to make sure that we push you in this direction and as fast as possible. Deal? Yeah. Deal. So here's what we're going to do. We've got to change our behaviors. We gotta change our lifestyles, the way that we're living if we wanna get better outcomes. But you know we always like to go upstream, right? You know that we can't do an outcome, right? We have to do the behavior that leads to an outcome. And in order for us to do things differently, we gotta think differently. So we gotta challenge our belief systems. What do we believe when it comes to acute illnesses like colds, flus, stomach bugs? What do we believe? Is it a germ? Do those germs make us sick? This is a safe place. You can say whatever you want. <laughs> Do the germs make us sick? Is it bad germs? Is that why we're dropping like flies this time of year? There's two different schools of thought, right? Either we can kill the bugs, we can kill the germs, or completely avoid them, or we can make sure that the host, right, the environment, is as strong as possible so that that bug cannot inhabit our body, right? Makes sense? So we can develop a very strong immune system, or we can just try and kill and avoid the bugs. Now, we have tried to kill the bugs. How well has that worked for us? Right? We have antibacterial everything, right? We throw antibiotics at everything. And where has it gotten us? We literally have antibiotic-resistant bacteria, right? That we have no defense against. So we got to realize they're going to change. They're going to adapt. We have viruses that literally have mutated and we no longer have a good defense against when it comes to medicine. So we got to realize we can't just kill the germs. That's not going to work. Right? It hasn't served us very well so far. And we can't just avoid those germs either. Right? You, I'm going to bring you all the way back to high school. Does everybody remember high school? Do you remember biology doing that? <laughs> haven't been there yet. You'll get there. And you're going to remember this talk when you get there. Right? <laughs> So in high school, uh, I don't know about you guys, but I did this experiment when they send us home with this kit, and we have like this cotton swab and this medium, and we're, we're supposed to go home and swab something at home and put it in this medium and see what grows, right? So we would swab things like water bottles or like a remote control or maybe a doorknob, and then we put it in this medium, and in a couple weeks, we would see what grew. And there's a lot of nasty stuff that grew in there, right? There is literally germs all around us. We're breathing them in right now. Okay? They're on the door handles that we touch. They're on our remote controls, our cell phones, our water bottles. Right? We come in contact with those germs all the time. So we can't avoid the germs. We can't kill the germs. So a better solution? Let's make sure we're as strong as possible. Okay? So first of all, those germs cannot inhabit our body. And if they do, let's kick them out as soon as possible. So I like the analogy, right? If we're talking about a plant, you need the seed, right? The germs have got to be there for us to get sick. But we also have to have the right environment, right? We've got to have the right soil for that seed, for that plant to actually throw down some roots and grow, right? So we are going to teach you how to bulletproof your immune system. Now, let's say uh, the other thing I, I like, we have a cold and flu season, right? So I'm going to challenge this belief. Do we really have a cold and flu season? Right. 
I told you those germs are here all the time, right? They're here in the summer, too. Did you know that? Yeah. So, but we don't see a lot of people getting colds and flus and other illnesses in the summer. All right? This is not the cold and flu season. This is the doing sick season, right? We are doing everything in our power to make sure that we get sick, right? And doesn't it start in fall with Halloween? Right, and the overconsumption of sugar. And we'll admit, like, the days get shorter. Right? It's not light outside. We're not getting vitamin D. It starts getting cold. Right? So our exercise routine just goes to heck. Right? Because I don't want to go outside in the cold. It's windy. I don't want to warm up my truck, scrape my car. So we're off the exercise wagon. Right? We're not getting our vitamin D because the sun's not out. We're turning on the forced hot air because it's cold, so we're drying out our mucous membranes. Everybody's blowing their nose and has like bloody noses in the morning, right? So our first line of defense is knocked down. Then we overindulge with the holidays, right? With the food, with the sugar, with the baked goods, which literally cripples our immune system. And then there's stress, right? There's family coming to town. We gotta travel, there's bad weather, right? And it's just one thing after the other, and all of those things are stacking up against us, and it's the doing sick season. All right? And once we finally get sick, or we get sick, we harbor that infection, what's our body do? It's our body. It gives us a warning signal, right? It tells us we have overloaded the system. You're overdoing it. And it will speak to us. Right? We have a warning signal or body signal, right? It might come in the form of a cough, a runny nose. Vomiting, diarrhea, fever, right? These are all body signals. And we need to learn to listen to our body. However, what do we typically do when we have a symptom or a body signal? We ignore it, right? We cover it up. So, I was told I can't walk past that plant, but if we just cover the surface issues up there, right? That top 10%, what happens to all of the issues down below? And they just get bigger. So that's why this year, what we're going to do every single month, we're going to be doing a body signals workshop. We're going to teach you guys how to speak body and how to listen to your body so you know what these symptoms actually mean so we can get to the root cause. We're going to talk about cause and effect. Okay? So over the course of the year, we're going to be addressing these different symptoms or warning signals. All right? Now, when your body finally screams at you and you have this body signal, what's actually going on? actually part of health. And many times these symptoms are part of getting healthy when we look at acute illness. For example, what do you think? Fever good thing or is it a bad thing? Good thing, right? Really good thing. I know we, um, we have this fear around fevers, right? We think that it's going to get it to a dangerous high level and that we could die, right? That's literally what has been ingrained inside us. Fever is a great thing. Fever is a wonderful defense mechanism. Now, do you guys remember? Now, I'm going to bring you back to chemistry class. I'm bringing back all those good memories from high school. And you're going to remember this too. When you your ass. In chemistry class, if we had uh, two reagents, right, and we had a reaction, and we wanted to speed that reaction up, we needed a catalyst. What was usually like a really good catalyst to speed that thing up? Nobody took chemistry, huh? <laughs> Heat it up, right? Put it under the Bunsen burner. Warm that thing up. So when we have a fever, what that's doing is it's creating an unfavorable environment for whatever pathogen that has inhabited our body. It's changing the set point, but at the same time, it's cranking up the immune system. All right? It is literally kicking our immune system into overdrive so we can kick this pathogen out of the system. Pretty smart, right? Is your body smart or is it stupid? Smart. It's smart. It is very smart. What about like a runny nose, mucus, snot? Good thing. Did you know that mucus is like our first layer of defense? It's a physical barrier. It's viscous. It traps things. And there's antimicrobial properties to that music, mucus. And then we, we, we make we make music, right? We cough, we sneeze, we, we get rid of it, right? But good thing we can trap it and get rid of it. Now, what about this? What about when we have the flu? What is like the major sign of the flu? You're tired, 
you're fatigued, you have that general malaise, right? You are achy, your joints hurt. What is your body telling you to do? Rest. And I like to think of the immune system like a car battery, right? You know, a car battery has multiple different drains on it, right? We've got to pull energy from that car battery. So we can turn on our lights and our brights and our blinker. We can turn on our radio, the dome light. We can plug something into the auxiliary jack. And all of that is a drain on that battery. Same thing when we look at all of the systems in the body. So when you're tired and you're achy, and your body is just telling you to relax, it's saying, hey, I don't want to delegate any energy to my musculoskeletal system right now, and I want all of it to go to my immune system, because my immune system is very energy expensive. So we need to listen to our body. And when we're just taking a medication to cover up those symptoms, that is part of doing sick. If we inhibit that fever, if we just take a couple ibuprofen and pound an espresso to get through the day, we're doing nobody any favors, including us. So I want you guys to stop being so afraid of symptoms. Recognize them. Know that they're there, but stop being so afraid of symptoms, these body signals. And the other thing, stop being afraid of germs. You're like, oh, germaphobes, it's crazy. If the germ theory of disease were correct, we would not be standing here today. Okay, we would all be dead. Nobody would be living to believe it. So the big five for bulletproofing our immune system, these look familiar, right? The living well big five, it is how we eat, how we move, how we think, how we sleep, and our neurologic function, right? Because our nervous system is our master system. And we know that it's these five things that compound over time and equal health and function. It's how we eat, it's how we move, it's how we think, it's how we rest and recover. It's the health of our spine and nervous system all over a certain period of time. And that's what dictates our health. So there's things that we're going to have to stop doing, guys. There's things that we're going to have to just slow down, pump the brakes on. And there are things that we are going to have to start doing to get the outcomes that we want. So here's the stop. Right? The doing sick season. We're overindulging in things like sugar. Right? Who likes their sugar? <laughs> Ours lady. She's proud of that. But sugar <laughs> literally cripples our immune system. Okay? First of all, when we eat sugars and high carbohydrate meat, meals, high processed meals, those sources of fuel are just dirty to burn. To put it plain and simple, they're dirty. So what happens is we actually produce a lot of free radicals. And as a result of producing all those free radicals, we create systemic inflammation. And that systemic inflammation is a chronic stressor on our immune system. Right? So it's going to knock it down. But not only that, we're going back to chemistry. Just because Dr. Heather was a chemistry major, so she made me put all these chemistry questions in here. Who in here knows the difference between sugar and vitamin C molecularly? The compound. They look very, very similar. We all know that vitamin C is important, right, to fight off an infection. Our immune cells burn vitamin C at a very rapid rate when we're fighting something off. Sugar and vitamin C look almost identical. Glucose and sugar do. Okay? So therefore, they compete to bind on the receptors of our cells. We're always going to have a higher affinity for glucose. We like that much better. So if we're eating a lot of sugar, we are literally not allowing vitamin C to do its job, and we inhibit the immune system. And we can do that if we eat a high sugary meal, we can do that for upwards of five hours. What's the typical person doing? We usually have like a sugary bowl of cereal for breakfast, start it off right. And then we can't go hungry, so we usually have a sugary packaged snack, maybe a soda pop at lunch, right? And the trend just continues and continues. If it's Christmas or Thanksgiving, you know, you got to eat all the leftover pumpkin pie and cookies and all that, right? So sugar literally cripples our immune system, and so do franken fats. So we call, uh, like, the trans fats and the industrial seed oils, they're franken fats. They're literally man-made, plant-made, like factory plants, not like, but they're plant byproducts made in a plant or factory. Right? So I'm talking about the sunflower oil, the safflower oil, the canola oil, the other vegetable oils, the soybean oils, the peanut oils, all of those fats, the margarine, those are franken fats. 
And our cells are only as healthy as the fats that we give them. So you know that all of our cells actually have a fat bilayer that surrounds them, right? And if we're consuming these junky franken fats, we incorporate those into our cells. And our cells don't communicate with each other very well. Those cell membranes become very rigid. So if we're eating those cruddy fats, those are literally what our cells are being made up as. Not only that, these franken fats are highly inflammatory, right? They're high in omega-6 fatty acids, which I won't get into. I know you guys are bummed. But once again, trigger an inflammatory response in the body. So we have that chronic stress on the immune system. So the unhealthy fats, the sugars, are just going to derail us. That's what we're going to see in a lot of the baked goods. And then the hand sanitizers. I went there. I went there because it's one of my biggest pet peeves. The hand sanitizers are doing us no favors. Okay, there are some questionable ingredients in there. There's parabens, there's phthalates, there's um, fragrances. So many of those are known hormone disruptors. And me and my team were just talking the, every, the other day. Almost everybody that comes into the clinic now seems like they have a thyroid issue. They have a hormone issue. We have so many toxins in our lives all the time. And unfortunately, these hand sanitizers are one of them. And what's the base? What do they make those hand sanitizers out of? Alcohol. And what's alcohol do? It dries us out. So you see on the bottle, it's like it kills 99.9% .9 of germs. Yep, they do. And it kills all the good, natural, healthy flora on your skin as well. And it dries out your mucous membranes, which are your first line of defense. Right? So we're actually inhibiting the immune system with the chronic use of these hand sanitizers. And literally just in December of 2017, the FDA said we can no longer put a substance called triclosan in a lot of household products. So like your hand sanitizers, your antibacterial soaps, even toothpaste that we've been using for decades, right? Yeah, we've been using them for decades. Because now they're saying, we don't know the uh, impact this can have on human health. And possibly we maybe made a mistake and they could be contributing to the superbug issue that we have. So just like two months ago they said, we can no longer use this substance. So if you have old hand sanitizer, it might still be in there. If you have commercial old toothpaste or antibacterial soap, it could be in there. So you might want to look for it. Right? Alcohol. Right? We can't get outside and exercise this time of year, so we might as well sit on the couch and have a, a couple of brewskis, right? Or maybe some rum and eggnog, or whatever other holiday drinks we have, some pumpkin spice drink, right? But we tend to consume more alcohol this time of year, right? And alcohol is going to destroy our normal gut flora, right, within the GI tract. And we know that our gut health really is really determines how healthy our immune system is. 70 to 80% of our immune function is the direct result of how healthy our gut is. Okay, so if we're always consuming alcohol or we're binge drinking, we're going to kill that natural flora. Okay? So the moral of the story is, is save the alcohol drinking for barbecue season when we're doing everything else right, and we'll handle it a lot better. Okay? And then number five, what we got to stop doing? Stop interfering, which we already talked about. So let's talk about the dudes. Plain and simple. Things you can do day in, day out to make sure we bulletproof our immune system. One, simply stay hydrated this time of year. It's cold. We're not hot, so we don't think about drinking plenty of water. Now, we've got to remember 60% of our body is actually water. Every single cell in our body requires an aqueous environment for proper cellular communication. So we need to be consuming water. But the trick here, guys, is this time of year we also turn on our heat. Things dry out. Anybody's nose like really dry and stuffy and bloody in the morning, right? Our skin dries out. Because we're turning on that forced hot air, we're drying out our mucous membranes. And like I said, that is one of our first lines of defense. So a good mechanism to overcome that, let's put some moisture in the air, right? Get a good humidifier, at least where you're sleeping and you should be spending like eight hours of your day. Let's at least get one in there, right? And then a good moisturizer. So if your hands are all cracked and dry and bloody, a good healthy moisturizer. Something that doesn't have all the fragrances and goofy chemicals in it. So maybe even something like a coconut oil would be just fine to rehydrate those mucous membranes. We're going to talk about supplements because I know you guys want to hear about supplements. Everybody always does. And food, exercise. We're going to talk about adjustments, sleep, as well as just listening to your body.
So how should we eat to bulletproof our immune system? I'll tell you, it's the exact same way you should eat to lose weight, the exact same way you should eat to decrease inflammation, right? And this is what it looks like, and this is what you always hear our pre us preach, unlimited vegetables. We should be eating as many vegetables as possible. Those vegetables have water in them, they have vitamins, they have minerals, they have phytochemicals and phytonutrients that act as antioxidants to combat inflammation. Right? They literally have almost everything that we need and require, except for the protein, right? Unlimited <coughs> lean meats, lean proteins, grass-fed, grass-finished meats. And they have a good fatty acid profile. Some nuts, some seeds, some fruits. Fruits are good, but they also contain a lot of sugar. Right? We want to make sure we don't want to, to overconsume the sugar. It's going to cripple the immune system. No starch, <coughs> limited starch, no sugar. So paleo, correct, I started... Now the germs are flying. <laughs> Get out the hand sanitizer. <laughs> All right. So a paleo correct lifestyle, that is what we always preach in the clinic. As part of an overall as part of an overall healthy lifestyle. So this is what our plates should look like. In schools they teach the food plate now. This is what our plate should look like. My kids are like champions of this. They're little freaks. I love it. Nora, Nora can, can name at least 15 vegetables. It is amazing, right? She can name five proteins. And she does pretty good with her nuts and seeds. She literally argues with her teachers about what's healthy and what's not because they teach the food plate. Yeah? She's four. She argues with her teacher. Her, her, her teachers hate me. Okay? They all line up for hand sanitizer between activities and when they go to different classes. And Nora says, my mom and dad says I can't use hand sanitizer. I wash my hand. And she argues with them. No, corn is actually a grain. It's not a vegetable. And peanuts are a legume. So she's just a little freak. So for those of you in the crowd that don't have kids yet, my kid is setting a precedence for your kids. You are welcome. Okay? She's a champion of this. I love her. Uh, so here's the do's and don'ts when it comes to diet. Supplements. Allie, I passed the plant. Sound must have out, right? All right. Supplements. The way that we address supplementation is there's two different kinds of supplements, right? We can take supplements to address a deficiency, right? Meaning that we need and require something for health, and it's simply missing from our lifestyle. So we got to supplement, supplement with, it, right? And then there's the supplements that just act as a support. So if you're actively fighting something and you need help, these supplements will help you and hopefully shorten your duration of illness or give you the support that you actually need. Okay, so that's how we're going to address supplementation. So these are the supplements this time of year and the majority of the year that people are just deficient in. And you need and you require them for proper cell function and health. The number one supplement that I would tell everybody they need to take is a good omega-3 fatty acids. Or a good omega-3 fatty acids in the form of fish oil. All right, a good, high quality fish oil. It's going to help with inflammation. But we talked about our cells, and our cells are only as healthy as the fats that we give them. We want those outer membranes, those cells, to be nice and pliable, be able to communicate with each other effectively. Right? And if they're made up of those good, healthy omega 3 fatty acids, they do that very efficiently, very effectively. So I recommend everybody is on a fish oil. Not only to bulletproof your immune system, but for overall health. And then a good probiotic, right? We know we're only as healthy, when we look at the immune system, we're only as healthy as our gut is, right? And it's going to help us fight off infection. So we want to feed those good bacteria. We want to create the proper environment, the proper pH for those bacterial bacteria to thrive, the good bacteria, right? So probiotics are going to help us do that. And then a whole food supplement. When I say that, I mean like a multivitamin, okay? But when you look at your multivitamin, it should have ingredients like spinach, broccoli, blueberries, okay? So it should actually be coming from whole foods. My favorite whole food supplement is like a green drink. I just put it in my smoothie in the morning, right? And that's how I get my whole food supplement in the morning. Easy, and you can find one that tastes good. You just gotta find one that's palatable for you. Vitamin D, especially this time of year. We are all just generally, we're vitamin D deficient. And this time of year, it's extra bad. Are we getting any sun? 
And today we got a little bit, right? And in the middle of winter, to be honest, even if we get one of those good sunny days, the way that the earth is rotated and the way that the sun hits the atmosphere, we're not getting those UVB rays that we need and require to actually convert vitamin D in our body. So even if we are getting sun in the winter months, it's not enough to make us vitamin D sufficient. Okay, so we do need to supplement. This time of year, everybody should be supplementing with 5,000 to 10,000 IUs. If you're actively fighting an infection, you can supplement upwards of 15,000 IUs. We don't see toxicity with vitamin D until we take over 40,000 IUs for months on end. So you don't really have to worry about that. In the summer months, guess what you gotta do? You gotta go outside. And you gotta not put sunscreen on, okay? And not cover up. Now by all means, if you're out there all day, I mean, don't get sunburned, but in order to actually convert vitamin D in the body, you have to get sun without sunscreen, okay? So sunscreen blocks those UVB rays. This time of year, a vitamin C supplement wouldn't be a bad idea either, especially if you're around a lot of people that are fighting infections. Make sure that we give those white blood cells, those immune cells, what they need and require to function. And then magnesium. Magnesium is another one that's going to help with inflammation. It is devoid in our diets because we've just overworked the soil, right? We've used artificial fertilizers and chemicals that have stripped it from our soils and our cooking methods and our diets actually deplete magnesium from our food and from our body. Okay, so magnesium, good supplement that can help with the immune system. So here's, yep. What can be recommended um, that is going to depend on weight, and I will get that for you. I don't know off the top of my head. Okay. I'm sorry. <laughs> I should have been prepared for that. I'll get that information to you. I promise. Okay. Supplementation to act as support. These are the good ones. Right? These ones actually have legitimate science and research behind them. Colloidal silver is a great just general antimicrobial. It's great in wound healing. Please follow the instructions on the bottle. Don't overdo it and don't ex use it for an extended period of time. That's not what it's for. Okay? Garlic is very anti-inflammatory. It can be a great antiviral. Elderberry, especially when we look at the flu. Okay? Elderberry, there's some good research that actually tells us that elder elderberry can reduce your days of struggling with the flu by up to four days. Right? So we know that's an infection you're going to hold on to for about 7 to 14 days. If you can knock four days off, sign me up. All right? How good do you think Tamiflu does? <laughs> if you catch it in time, it can decrease your symptoms by about 14 hours. You yes? Know what I heard that if you took that Tamiflu, it would reduce the time for the flu of two days. Now, I mean, come on, who wants to mess with that kind of drug? What, <laughs> what I've seen is what I've seen is is 14 hours, right? And and the other thing is when we look at the pediatric population kids, this drug can actually have some serious great side effects, right? It can be it can act as a neuropsychotropic drug, meaning that they can have hallucinations. There's literally been teenagers that have killed themselves after taking that drug. Okay, so it's not a safe drug. No drug use, right? Tamiflu. Yeah, that's typically if you're struggling with the flu and you come in and say, yep, you got influenza, that's what they're going to do. So, just try elderberry, see if it works for you. Much safer. Nature always knows best. Echinacea, right, especially when we look at upper respiratory infections. Echinacea works great. Ginger, right, anti-inflammatory. Ginseng is a great just general antimicrobial. Olive leaf extract is a favorite in my house. Um, especially if you need something to like coat your throat, you got that uh, like scratchy throat, and then oregano oil. So if you're struggling with like a sore throat or something like that, a good supplement. I'm never like a huge fan of ingesting the oils, but this is one that has some good research behind it. The oregano oil, please just a few drops, like in eight ounces of water, and do not get it on your lips. <laughs> so, the awesome. the capsule. Capsule. Oh, there you go. Okay, so you can get the capsule, but yeah, do not get it on your list. It's awful. Absolutely <laughs> awful. All right, if we want to prevent getting sick, what do we do this year? Our exercise routines completely drop off, right? We, we jump off the exercise bandwagon. But we got to realize, just like with supplements, right, we have certain deficiencies that we need to address with supplementation, right, just because of the way that we live. Exercise is a supplement, right? We have to supplement movement into our life. 
Does that make sense when I say that? All right. We literally don't move. Our ancestors used to move like 10 to 15 miles a day. We sit for 10 to 15 hours a day. So we have to supplement movement into our lives now. And we have to do that with exercise. So there's three things that we can literally do to just hit the reset button on our body. And exercise is one of them. So can we all agree that like our stress is high? We're usually stuck in that fight or flight, stressed out mode. And when we look at the nervous system, there's two different divisions, right? We've got fight or flight, rest and repair. Fight or flight, rest and repair. We cannot be in fight or flight and rest and repair at the same time. Exercise is one of those things that is literally like hitting the reset button or the reboot button to get us out of that fight or flight mode. Because as I'll show you in a little bit, being stuck in fight or flight down regulates our immune system. Okay? So this is one thing we can do to actually hit the reset button. What happens is we see a reduction in obviously the stress hormones, right? We burn them up when we exercise. Our primitive uh, reflex is when we're stressed out, we're supposed to move, right? We gotta fight, we gotta flee. So let's just do that, right? And it's gonna work better than any antidepressant or anti-anxiety, okay? And we gotta realize we have this cool janitorial system in our body called the lymphatic system. All right? And what the lymphatic system does is, yeah, it produces immune cells. Yeah, that's where a lot of the fight takes place. But that's also the system that literally cleans up all of the debris from the attack of the immune system. Right? And we need movement for the function and the movement of that lymphatic tissue, okay? or that lymph. Right? So like the heart, it has a pump. Right? Or the circulatory system has a pump, the heart. The lymphatic system, there's no pump. Our pump is muscle contraction. Right? We need to move to actually to stimulate that lymphatic system. What's the best exercise for that, Dr. Marley? What do you guys think? <laughs> walking. Walking. Running. Those are good. Those are good. I like burpees. Burpees. <laughs> I, went to a, I went to a school last week, and some little kid, I said, what's the best exercise? And she goes, burpees. And I'm like, all right, come show me a burpee. And she came down, so it was awesome. Right? Kids are awesome. But yes, burpees, right? Because it's a full body movement. So in all reality, you get a squat, you get a plank, you get a push up, and then back into a squat, you get a jump up. So it's like a good full body movement. Of the yeah. So if, if, if I wasn't all mic'd up and corded up, I would do a burpee. Right? Exercise also improves our circulatory system and it makes us sweat, right? So it's a detoxification system for us. So in order to avoid illness, we need to keep up with our exercise. It's going to help create a robust body. However, when we are sick, what do you think we need to do? Right. No exercise when we're sick, when we're fighting something off. Remember I said the immune system is very metabolically expensive, so we don't need to be delegating energy to our musculoskeletal system in that time. Let's just heal up, recover, and then get back to our exercise when we're ready to do it. Okay? So we gotta listen to our body. So sleep is the second thing we can do to hit the reset button. Right? Isn't she cute? <laughs> All right, so sleep is another reset button for us. When we sleep, we wind down everything, right? Our brain's not trying to focus on something or concentrate on something or recall something. Our musculoskeletal system, I mean, some of you, I don't, I know you flail and kick around at night or have restless legs or whatever, but we should be pretty still when we sleep, so we shouldn't be activating our musculoskeletal system. Everything is going to be delegated to that janitorial system or the immune system, right? That is when we're going to rest and repair and heal. Right? It is essential to get out of that fight or flight and rest and repair. We have to get adequate sleep, not only when we're sick, but to prevent illness. Right? And the magic number is seven and a half. Our sleep cycles come in 90 minute waves. Okay? So we always say you need to get seven and a half or nine hours of sleep. Seven and a half or nine hours of sleep. So try and set up your sleep schedule to where you hit that 90 minutes, that's where you're going to get the most restful sleep. And that's for adults. Kiddos in the room need more. Yeah, you just know. sleep as much as you can. <laughs> Us adults appreciate that. You just sleep as much as you can. Okay? So in order to be successful in the sleep arena, we got to eat fast. we got to get the technology out of our rooms. 
So who has like a cell phone right next to their bed or a TV that they fall asleep to every single night? Yeah, that blue light stimulates our brain and it's going to make it almost impossible for us to wind down and get restful sleep. So we got to get the technology out of the room. Who are you calling out? I'm not calling and then, out. And then if you, and then if you can nap, get a nap in during the day if your job uh, allows for that. All right, we got to talk about thought life too, right? Because I talked about fight or flight, rest and repair. Fight or flight, rest and repair. In our primitive stress response, we got to fight or flee, like running from a pack of wolves, right? But today, we don't know the difference between a cruddy relationship, cruddy finances, cruddy job, cruddy boss, and running from a pack of wolves, right? So many times people are just stuck in fight or flight all day, right? Emotionally, they are emotionally stressed. And this stress response, what it does, it increases our blood pressure, increases our heart rate. We're going to see an increase in muscle tone. We're going to downregulate things like digestion, reproduction. We're going to downregulate, you got it, immune system. Right? So there's a lot of negative things that are associated with stress. In fact, stress is the number one cause and contributor to all chronic illness. Right? But it comes in multiple different forms. And I know stress, is, that's, that's just a hard topic to tell somebody not to be stressed. So my advice for people, if you eat like we tell you to eat, if you move like we tell you to move, if you get the restful sleep like we tell you to get, if you address those deficiencies in your uh, diet with supplementation, and you avoid the toxicities in our diet, and you get adjusted, typically, the stress takes care of itself. Okay? You handle that stress a whole lot better. So here is the big picture for tonight, guys. Healthy is normal. But like we talked at the beginning of this workshop, it's not the norm. And your body, your body is smart. You guys are awesome. Your body is very intelligent. And your nervous system, it is your master system. All of those systems we talked about tonight, from the immune system to the lymphatic system to the circulatory system, right, to the digestive system, reproductive system, there's one system that controls and coordinates all of those systems, and it's our nervous system, right? And we were given this brilliant design to protect that nervous system, and it's the spine. The spine literally acts like a suit of armor to our nervous system to protect it. Like we said, modern life, it's unnaturally stressful. Can we all agree on that? And it comes in multiple forms, right? It's the thoughts, like we just talked about. It's the toxins, like the foods and the toxicities that we come in contact with. And it's traumas. Anybody ever been in a car accident? We have macro traumas. And we have micro traumas. You know what's funny? I'm so glad that I'm a chiropractor. I have colleagues that literally call my kids bumps and bruises and joke that they're going to give my kids helmets for Christmas. Because <laughs> we always have a picture like this, right? Let's, let's face it. If any parents in the room, you know that we have a lot of these little micro traumas going on. And it can affect that suit of armor, right? That spinal column. It can jar it out of its normal, healthy position. And as all of you patients know, that is called a like, subluxation, right? A subluxation is we have abnormal alignment, abnormal movement and motion of the spine. And this creates soft tissue damage, right? Damage to the disc, it creates inflammation and nerve irritation. And as a result of that nerve irritation, we have a muscle spasm, right? And if we don't address that muscle spasm and that subluxation right away, we start to decondition the muscle, and we attract fibrotic adhesions to the muscle, fatty infiltration to the muscle, so we completely decondition the muscle. And then we start losing out on normal motion to the joint, we lose out on imbibition, right? Which means we don't get nutrients into the disc and the soft tissue, and we start attracting fibrotic tissue to the actual joint itself, and now we have a segment of the spine that is just locked up and stuck and doesn't move. Right? Big deal, doc, so I can't touch my toes, who cares? Right? Well, motion is very, very important for the spine. Right? 90% of stimulation and nutrition to the brain comes from movement, and the majority of it is movement of the spine. The reason being, is because we have a whole lot of teeny tiny little receptors within this spine, within the joints of the spine, within the soft tissue around 
the spine. And those receptors are literally what feed the brain. Right? It acts like fuel and nutrition to the brain. We require that input for health. Right? It's like wind to a windmill. Movement of the spine is the engine that literally runs the brain. Okay? So if we have a joint that's just stuck, we miss out on that nutrition and stimulation. Right? If we have a joint that is damaged and we have inflammation and tissue damage and nerve irritation, not only do we miss out on the good information, but we have a constant barrage of noxious stimulation to the brain. And you want to know what the end result is as a result of this fixation and subluxation? It's the stress response. Right? And when we're stuck in a stress response, what's that do to your immune system over time? It downregulates it. Right? So the health of your spine is a key component when we look at the health of the immune system. Subluxation causes nerve irritation and keeps your body from healing and adapting like it is supposed to do. So for the guests in the room, you're like, what is he talking about? Right? How would I even know if I had this subluxation thing in my back? You know in our office we do things different, right? We're thorough. I am very um, analytical, so I want to be sure that I'm sure that I'm sure that there's an issue there and we need to adjust it. So we have instrumentation, right? We have to see if we actually have inflammation. It reads heat, right? We have motion palpation. We actually move the spine. So the joint is moving like it's supposed to. We assess the soft tissues through static palpation. Is the muscle deconditioned? We look, is this subluxation thrown off your posture? And then we look at your x-ray and say, all right, how long has this thing been here? How much damage has been going on? What are we looking at as far as correction? Right? So we're very, very specific in our approach to chiropractic care. And I want to tell you the research, when we look at chiropractic care and the function of the immune system, is overwhelming. Okay? We see an increase of all of these markers. So every single study, I don't want to bombard you. Anytime I like to tell you guys about studies, my wife is like, stop. Okay? They don't care. Right? You're the only one that cares. So when we look at all of these studies up here, what they actually did is they did blood work, right? They looked at markers within their blood, then there was an intervention, a chiropractic adjustment, and then either a few hours later or over a duration of time, they looked at those markers again. And what we see over and over with the chiropractic adjustment is after we adjust somebody, there's an increase in phagocytosis. So I want you to think of this like Pac-Man. Everybody remembers Pac-Man? Right? And your immune system is actually the big yellow guy, Pac-Man, and those little balls are the germs. Right? Phagocytosis is like Pac-Man. Right? We want to stimulate that process. We want to eat up all of those germs and gulf them and get them out of the system. Right? So we see an increase in a process called phagocytosis. There's an increase in secretory IgA, our first line of defense in our mucous membrane. Right? Upwards of 140% increase in secretory IgA. So it helps our first line of defense. Increases interleukin-2, right? T-cell response, both very important for the immune system. Decreases cortisol, right? When we restore normal motion and mechanics to the spine, it decreases that stress response. And it decreases inflammatory cytokines. And so it takes the stress off of the immune system by decreasing inflammation. Pretty cool. I know of no other natural intervention that can do something like that and just work with the body's own innate intelligence to actually heal itself. So, when you guys are sick, and I tell you, come in anyway, it's not just a good idea, and it's not just because I want you to snot all over my table, okay? It's because I know it's going to help you recover faster, it's because I care about you, okay? And where we see, like, the biggest success story in the history of my profession, was during the Spanish flu. So have any of you ever heard of the 1919 flu pandemic? All right, that literally killed millions of people across the world and across the United States. And there was a brave, select group of people right, that chose, hey, the medical route isn't working so well. We're losing a lot of people. I'm going to try this chiropractic thing, even though it's only 25 years old and they got a bad rap. I'm going to try them out. And guess what? When we look at all the data and we go back and look at that, we had 140th the death rate, that's the medical profession. And this is why, because every time we lay our hands on you and we adjust you, we stimulate this normal, healthy, natural immune response. Pretty cool, right? Pretty cool. All right, so we always gotta end with a success story, right? Today we got a kiddo. So 
The number one reason that a kid is going to see a pediatrician is for what? What do you think? Is it up there? Ear infections, right? And to tell you the truth, one of the most common things that kids come into the clinic for initially if they have a symptom or a warning signal is ear infections. And we tend to get great results of that. So in Harper's case, a nine-month-old kid had four ear infections over four months. And what do you think their treatment was? Antibiotics. So here's what would happen. She would get an ear infection, then they'd give her an antibiotic, and then the ear infection would go away. And then it would come back. They'd give her an antibiotic, it would go away. Then it would come back. Then they'd give her an antibiotic, it would go away. And cycle through that four different times. All right. Now, I like using this analogy, right? The garbage can and the, the rat analogy. So if we have garbage, we have a garbage can, a dumpster, is it going to attract rats? Okay, we could poison the rats, right, and they're going to go away. But if I don't get rid of that trash, what's going to happen? They're going to come back, right? So in her particular case, it wasn't the bug. It wasn't the bad bug. It was the internal environment, right? So when we did an exam on her, she had a subluxation of her upper cervical spine, the atlas. Right? She had nerve irritation, not allowing her body to function like it should. But not only that, the lack of movement created stasis, if you, if you put your ears right on, or you put your fingers right on this atlas, how close is that to your ears? Super close, right? Super close to that gestation tube. So not having that normal motion and mechanics there wasn't allowing that to drain. So it created a backup, stasis, a plumbing issue, right? And that bacteria could just thrive in there. So once that was taken care of, restored normal nerve system function, normal lymphatic flow, she was able to recover from the ear infections. No more antibiotics, and she was actually set up for an ENT appointment, right? She was going to get ear tubes. No ear tubes. Pretty cool, right? If more people just knew that this could be an option as opposed to throwing antibiotics at everything or just tossing ear tubes in some kids' in panel, right? So, extra adjustments when you're sick. Got it? Okay. And we need to break our bad habits that are contributing to our subluxation pattern, right? Whether it's the poor posture, the repetitive motion, the poor sleeping position. And we have to add those corrective exercises that we give you. Life extensions is a beautiful one for everybody. If you don't have that exercise, just let us know. We'll email it to you. Okay. So if you're already doing sick, if you're trying to recover, right? I heard a couple coughs and sneezes. This is what we need to do. Rest. No exercise. Sleep as long as possible. You're not doing yourself or anybody else any favors by going to work. Get extra adjustments. Limit the sugar. Limit the stress. Drink plenty of water. More water than you usually drink. We need to be drinking half of our body weight in ounces. So if you weigh 150 pounds, 75 ounces of water a day. The supplements that we are devoid in, let's supplement them. Let's get a little bit extra support. Let's eat simple, nutritious, nutrient-dense foods. Something like bone broth is good. So if we have your email, everybody here that registered for this will actually send you a bone broth recipe that we use in our house. Okay? So experiment with some good bone broths or a vegetable-based smoothie with your whole food supplement in it. Okay? And then can we just listen? Can we trust this intelligent design that we have? And just trust our body to take care of it. Like, when did we think that all of a sudden we were smarter than our bodies? It drives me nuts. Let's just listen, acknowledge, and trust that we can overcome whatever we're struggling with. Okay? I hope that was useful for you guys. The other thing, some of these topics, we, I only have an hour to talk to you. And this could be like a weekend long seminar. So we created like a 20 page ebook that goes into depth on some of these if you have some questions. All of you guys will get that too. Okay, so just check your email. But at the beginning of this, you promised me, you made a commitment to me, right? You all did very good listening, and I know you thought that you promised me that you would implement at least one or two things, okay? Not tomorrow, not next week, tonight, okay? So you're gonna take something from this and implement it tonight. I always know when I speak to a group, Right? Whether it's our group or we go out, I know that I'm talking to two different groups of people. 
Okay? I'm talking to the group of people that you're already doing this, right? You're getting adjusted. You come to all of these workshops and you're implementing the lifestyle success strategies that we give to you guys. But I know there's a whole other group of people, right, that are guests. They never heard this information before. They're struggling with their health. They're looking for different options. So if you are a guest in the room and there's something you're struggling with, because I know you're here for a reason, right? If there's something you're struggling with, by all means, I'd love to sit down with you. I'd love to chat about your health goals, your health challenges, see where you want to go, what you want to accomplish. I'd love to do a detailed examination, right, where we take x-rays, we do these thermography studies, figure out if you have any issues going on in the spine, and then go over those findings with you, tell you if we think we can help or not, and give you the appropriate plan of action, okay? And since you are here, and you are an action taker, I want to do that at a severely reduced cost. So normally that's $250 in our clinic, that initial patient experience, but I want to do that for only $45, just because you showed up and you participated um, and you took action tonight. So if that's something you're interested in, all you got to do is see the girls in the back and they can take care of you. But I'm challenging you even more. I'm not going to let you procrastinate. If that's something you're interested in, you actually have to schedule your appointment today, and you got to pay for that appointment today to make sure that you actually show up to that appointment. Okay? <laughs> so, no more procrastination. We know it's the biggest thief when it comes to health. So, implement it, and if any of you are interested in that offer I gave you, make sure you schedule that appointment tonight. All right? I hope that was helpful, and all of you are going to stop doing sick, right? And we're going to start doing health. So. I appreciate you guys' this time, guys. Thank you.